Leo, we have a massive Mexican fan base. Yeah, we do. You saw the turnout at the San Bernardino show. Yeah, that was incredible. And they're they're Chicanos. You know what I mean? I would like some more straight from Mexico, but they're real Chicanos. You know what I mean? Like, uh, you weren't here for the episode, but uh, the guy that got shot in the hand, I had him on the pod. I heard you brought that guy. Yeah, he was great on the pod. Would everybody agree? King yeah, Croft, wasn't everybody he great? liked him. Dude, Including he was... Him. I was afraid of that guy when I first met him. Uh -huh. <laughs> you know how, like, if a chick got raped by a guy who did it while wearing a ski mask, mm -hmm. but then at a cocktail party three weeks later, he, in a suit, introduced himself, and she would get an inexplicable chill down her spine? Mm. That's how I felt when I met that guy at the show. Okay. Like, he'd raped me a month ago in a mask. Okay, well, you know, I'm gonna, I'll be honest. I haven't been 100% on getting non-psychopaths onto the, the crew, Danny. Sometimes I'm like, oh, he's fine. Turns out mm -hmm. he's a psychopath, mm -hmm. okay? But actually, mm -hmm. it's kind of high, actually, because if Rat Dick, I mean, there's not that many people in the crew, and Rat Dick and a Cigar Guy and another couple of guys have been a little bit crazy. Oh! Mm -hmm. So, you know, I had him on, though, because I just wanted to, I just had this feeling. Well, when you had the, the chill, I had this this urge to just talk shit about his fucked up hand because mm -hmm. I remember <laughs> you having so much fun in the Hobbit hand hooch oh, episode. Oh, yeah. It's an easy target. <laughs> yeah. So we, I kind of would, it was, you know, we, we talked shit about his hand, but he had, it was a pretty incredible story beginning to end. He got shot and, like, then he went, he ran into a pole going 65 and got, went unconscious and mm -hmm. woke up, which is bleeding out of his hand, calls 911 and then his mom. And then, uh, and then, yeah, he he like went, he was like in and out of consciousness the whole night, and they and he told us about the surgery, and you know he he can't use it a hundred percent. It was a pretty interesting story. Hmm. Getting shot in the hand would be pretty nice, especially if you were overseas fighting a war. You get shot in the hand, Purple Heart right mm -hmm. away, mm -hmm. which equals pussy, mm -hmm. and you're out of combat. You're not gonna die. You take the bullet next to one of your phalanges. Is that a word for finger? I think so. And then you're just you're you're kicking back watching Seinfeld in a hospital somewhere. You think? I mean, yes, I love that. But in Forrest Gump, he gets shot in the butt talks. Mm. Remember that? And he got all those medals and everything. And it, it made it seem like it was pretty nice to get shot in the, shot oh, in the butt. Oh, butt's even better than the hand. No yeah. bones down there. No bones. It's I love good. it. This guy in our local Seven Eleven, though, to get back to our Mexican fans, mm -hmm. I'm checking out. Uh, I tried. You might see a fruit cup at my feet. It's full of unripe mango and jicama. Worst purchase ever. I'm not sure how good their return policy is over there, though. This kid, while I'm checking out, though, goes, Shiv, oh, you look like Danny Mullen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's exactly how our Mexican Chicano fans do sound. We're not trying to be racist. They it's just, just have, accurate. Like Actually, everyone yeah. in Ontario was just like, fucking Dino and Austin would be fuck without you guys. Oh, yeah. fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, this guy, Leo. I'm sorry to tell you, he spoke perfect English. You asshole! He, dude. <laughs> he was like, hey man, you look like Danny Mullen. Nice. And he just happened to have brown skin. <laughs> also, dude, I forget if I told you this. Did I tell uh, you about my neighbor? No, I don't think so. My neighbor woman. Uh, the, I didn't tell the story in the last pod. Mm -hmm. So I was parking on the side of my curb, and I accidentally parked on a Thursday in a no parking on Thursday spot. And this little Mexican woman's like, excuse me, sir, it is Thursday. You get a ticket. Mm -hmm. And then I'm just like, oh, thank you so much. I, I'm out of it right now. I didn't see that. She says, yes, my son, he loves you. No. And I went, what? Damn. And she's like, yes, he see you unload your couch one day when you move in. He says, that's Danny Mullin. No. And I guess <laughs> this kid, his name is George. Mm. I don't want to say his last name, but it might be. Uh, Lopez? Yes. Lloyd. It might be the name of another. <laughs> George Lopez? It's George Lo It's actually actually George Lopez. No, no, no way. way. I was about to say it's the name of a famous uh, la Latino entertainer. Uh, but uh, George Lopez went to college for accounting and is a graduate. Wow. And he grew up in my neighborhood that I now live in, which is not a good neighborhood. Mm -hmm. So props to you, George, for picking for picking yourself up by your bootstraps. I like it. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. The, the American Latinos, dream. Right? Yeah. I think we've realized on shoots that the Latinos have a great sense of humor. It's hard to just mess, mess with them because they'll just be laughing mm -hmm. right at the bat. Remember, mm -hmm. I mean, the guys, We every time we go to a Home Depot, we get some of the Mexicans in front involved. They built they built the cross. Yeah, they did. Yeah, they, they sanded uh, it, too. They sanded it. They they were holding the We Get Pussy sign, right? Mm -hmm. They love that. They loved that job. <laughs> they were fighting over that job. Yeah, they were. Call, yeah, they were fighting over that job. We had to swat away a couple other guys just because the two dudes we saw first were like, hey, guys, they got tips. <laughs> 
See, the Latinos, I, their dads uh, and mothers growing up, they like to do jokes. You know, they joke around. I feel like they, uh, they, uh, they even make like inappropriate jokes per mm. se. So the the humor that you kind of tailor to is it's, it's just it's right up the Latinos' alley. It's very macho that culture. Very macho. Oh, geez, yeah. Very. Bro. If you aren't a straight guy who knocks your wife up a bunch of times. You're a bitch. Yeah, exactly. If you can't provide for your family, you're a bitch. So gay humor, which is 75% or so of our output. Yeah. <laughs> right up there, Ali. A hundred percent. They, the, my, the old oh. maricon, so su maricon, like they'll literally just call kids. I mean, the faggot is maricon basically in Spanish, and they'll call and, kids that all and, the time. And word, Leo knows because he is Latino, people. Just mm -hmm. for any of the Patreon censors who may be watching, Leo I am Latino. is a Latino. Boy. Yep. I'm Latino. All the Latino cultures are pretty much the same. It's all about, like, you got to get yourself a woman that uh, cooks and cleans. <laughs> and she has to be loyal to you. And then you cheat every now and then. It's fine. But she cannot cheat on you because that is the way that That's God beautiful. wants it. That's the way that God. Honestly, Leo, if you ever got canceled by YouTube or something for saying something racist, you could just tell them that you're whatever race you were making fun of, and they'd probably believe you. Leo has Muslim, a lot. Muslim, Mexican, yeah. 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 black yeah. even. Indian. I'm, Ooh. Ooh. I'm Israeli. Oh, oh my God. God. <laughs> Leo has almost the entire globe covered, except for like Sweden. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I couldn't be too, uh, I can't be a Swedish guy. You can't be, sure. you can't be anti-Swedish. Ah, you can't call Norwegian. them a bunch of no. fishmongering <laughs> sauna goers. <laughs> I guess uh, we were talking on the pod, the one that you were in here, the the Patreon pod, uh, with the, one of these junkies. By the way, I talked to two junkies. We should do that today again. Over the it phone? was unbelievably interesting. What do you mean? It. Two guys addicted to fentanyl that are doing it every day. How did you get a hold of them? I, I put it on my story. I found two two fans. I literally <sighs> that hurts did, my did a little research. We have junkie fans. Oh, we have a bunch, dude. Yeah, and they're big bunch. fans. This guy, buddy, this guy was a biomedical engineer a graduate. That now is addicted to fentanyl, and his parents give him fifty bucks a day to do it. Oh no! Yeah, that is tragic. That sounds every, like good content. He has to hit himself wow. every ninety minutes. He has to. He has to uh, dose. He says. Is he functioning? High functioning? Not is really. He, he doesn't have a job. He goes, Yeah, I could probably have a job. I'm like, Really? How uh -huh. often would you have to go to the bathroom? Uh -huh. He goes, Every ninety minutes. Yeah. So I was like, Dude, you're gonna get fired immediately. There were when I worked at the Win, there were two Muslim people we worked with who during Ramadan they needed to go eat at dusk and they almost got fired. Mm -hmm. I don't think 90 minutes for a fentanyl shoot up is going to fly. No. And then also he he rolls out, he said, where he'll just pass out every now and then from doing oh, it. Oh, wow. I'm like, oh, yeah, buddy. Oh, they'll, yeah. they'll find you passed out in the, in the, in the stall at, 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 at Target, dude. You're getting fucking written up at least. Uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> at least you're getting written up, That's dude. All, there's just tinfoil and jar yeah. marks on your face. <laughs> oh, Toby. Uh, yeah. Damn it. Oh, I mean, he's. <laughs> This this note here indicates my displeasure with you, <laughs> Danny. We got to be fake junkies, dude. So <laughs> fake junkies trying to dude, get a that's job. Funny. Fake junkies trying to get a job, dude. I can we smoke get real itchy. fentanyl. We get real itchy. Oh, Brando, Leo's Brando. cat is here, and he just sprang wow. up onto the refrigerator. He's going for the liquid IV. Brando, are we, are we still sponsored by Liquid IV? Yes, we are. Oh, he's going for the liquid IV. He knows it's delicious. Him. Brando, man. What is he? He's... I did make a really good mixed drink with that liquid IV stuff. I bet. No way. Bomb. He's going to go to the other side? This and, is going to get interesting. Yeah, he's going to make a big leap Yo, here. Parkour? We'll keep you posted. Austin, I, I'm addressing this to you because I feel like you're the most likely to know. Tell me a little bit about fentanyl because as far as I understand it, it's a poison like 10 times more deadly than cyanide. You hear the stories of all the instant overdoses. Mm -hmm. But then also it sounds like it's a substance people are just using to get high on mm -hmm. relatively safely. Yeah. What is it? It's, it's a synthetic opioid. There it is, yeah. So it basically acts, it's like a shittier version of heroin or something, and you can smoke it and snort it yeah. or shoot it up just like normal heroin. Right. Every kid and, that we talked to started with pills, went to heroin, then went to fentanyl. And it's because it's really cheap. So yeah. eventually you get desperate. You're like, fuck, I only have 50 bucks and yep. I need to get my hit. Yeah. Well, I can get a bunch of fentanyl, and then you're hooked to fentanyl. Why is it so toxic? Why the overdose? 
Because it, I, I don't know the exact number, but it's like ten times more powerful than weed. They give it to you mm. as like a hardcore painkiller. Than heroin, in hospitals. You mean? I mean, yeah. heroin. Yeah. Yeah, it's a hundred times is what uh, the guy. Hundred times. Yeah. And then, wow. it, from what I, Dave Navarro was talking a little bit about it on the Adam Carolla show. I don't remember exactly what he said, but he made it sound like occasionally you can come across these hyper concentrated grains of fentanyl that are enough to kill you on contact. Oh, there was a story about an SFPD officer who touched, I think, barehanded some fentanyl, just handled it, and he went into a seizure. Jesus. So I guess you're just playing Russian roulette whenever you fuck with it. And also, yeah. that $20 million seizure they just made of fentanyl down in Long Beach or Orange County somewhere, a lot of that was in the form of prescription pill lookalikes. Wow. Yeah. Meaning they took Vicodin, they took Percocet, they took Adderall, and they replicated the look of those pills to the point where they are indistinguishable, but they have fentanyl. Right. So and fucking be careful, everybody. You can yeah, buy a pill pressing machine for like 200 bucks, and you can oh, order really? like big quantities of... Uh, like knock off Xanax, fentanyl, all these kind of shit off the deep web. And then just like dumb high school students are literally pressing pills and they look like they all... those yellow school buses that you hear uh, of. Or no, no, the green hulks, which is like a green Xanax, are oh, all fake. Oh, shit, I fuck with those, dog. Yeah, the, so basically <laughs> uh, they were telling us that. Like that, that they were all telling us that, that it was like it was Xanax with a little fentanyl. It's what you just said. We could talk to the guy. You want? Should we call the, the junkie again for Danny? I mean, I'll straighten him up. The I mean, bio, yeah, the biomedical engineer guy. He was the one that he was in denial. Let me get his number. Yeah, I'll straighten this guy. I out think too. he was just the last person I called. So yeah, yeah, he should that. still be there. I just yeah. feel like why aren't we talking about one of the biggest sources of this epidemic? Hmm. The CCP. Wow, China's involved. They yeah, that's actually true. It all comes from China. In Mexico, the cartels in Mexico, they're hmm. supported by the CCP. The United States government is aware of this. The Department of Justice is aware of this. I don't know what they're doing. Hmm. Are they corrupt? Are they inefficient? Are hmm. they idiots? What's going on? Because it's clear that the CCP is funding the advancement of fentanyl huh. on American soil. You know what I'd pay so much for? King Croc in a cage match with the leader of the CCP. <laughs> oh, I would fuck that nigga up. Right? <laughs> oh, my God. What's his uh, name? Ping? What's up? Xi Jinping. Yeah. And oh. I can never go to the CCP because actually they, they, they created a new law about two years ago. Uh, I think it's the national security law mm -hmm. where any province of the CCP, I including Hong here. Kong, awesome. yeah. Yeah. not just you. mainland yeah. China. Yeah. The 901. If you yeah. have... Let me Spoken text him. against the Chinese government, it's now, now considered a crime. All right, yeah, I wouldn't go either because I've Let's talked see if he answers. about it with you. I wouldn't go. Yeah. Let's see if he answers, and then uh, let's leave him a voice message. It's called Jack in the Box. Was it? A there it is. Cool. Uh, we were to hey, buddy, it's Danny it's, Mullen. It's Danny Mullen, buddy, and Leo Dottavio. We're back on the Patreon pod, and Danny. Thought it was way too interesting that you were a biomedical engineer that is hooked on fentanyl. And we wanted to ask you some questions again. Is that cool? My That's man. Good. Hell yeah, dude. It's good. Well, yeah. first of all, thank you for being a fan, but that's the last complimentary thing I'm going to say to you. Just what the hell is your problem, buddy? Oh, God. Uh, yeah, we're not we're not going to be. Listen, this is good cop, bad cop. I'm definitely I was the good cop last week. Now the bot, the bad cop has entered the chat, buddy. So why don't you tell Danny how you got addicted to the old opiate fentanyl in the first place? I mean, uh, kind of like I said, I was like, you know, uh, after COVID hit, I had come back home. He kind of sounds like Dino. Mm hmm. He's it's not like a your thing, biomedical right? engineer degree, right? What do you have? Yeah, correct. I have a it's bachelor in of science in biomedical engineering. Wow. Biomedical engineer. Name all of the noble gases on the periodic table. Got to test these guys. Name all of the noble gases. Yeah, um, you heard me. Helium. Uh, neon. Xenon. Uh, that's pretty good, dude. I, that's already surprising to me. That's three of. 
There's like I asked for all of them. King Croc. What about oh, Argon, God. you dumbass? Ah, uh, yeah. Argon. Is Boron one? Uh, probably. I don't even no. All I know is Boron. Argon, because I was a Lord of the Rings Boron. fan. Boron is not one. Uh, uh, Boron? What well, about Moron? <laughs> 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 yeah, that's the only important no. one to you, Jack. Uh, no. So, uh, so, dude, on a serious note, uh, you know, I mean, we don't want you to die from this shit, so Danny's kind of fucking with you, but... At the same time, um, what's the last time you shot up some fent? He shoots it, huh? Do you shoot it or do you? No, no you uh, snort it. No. Snort How do you take it, it again? Um, you, you snort yeah. it. All right, so when's the last time you did yeah. something? I toot it. I sniff it slash toot it. Occasionally, mm -hmm. very occasionally, I'll, I'll smoke a little bit of it. Okay. Um, uh, literally, uh, I uh, just finished uh, 30 bag, like, not even 20 minutes ago. 20 minutes. You're high on fentanyl right now. Disgusting. Uh, on our airwaves. <laughs> on our... Danny, you got to feel sorry for him. Look at this. Look at this. this is hilarious. You got to feel sorry I, for him. I, I, I don't... I, I mean, y yes and no. I mean, uh, yeah, I guess you could say so. I'm definitely buzzed. How do you feel? You feel good or do you just feel average? Do you just feel like you can make it through the day now? Yeah, I feel average. I mean... Um, I mean, like, I'm not just nodding out or like that, you know? Okay, but, not like, nodding out, yeah. All right, so what's the deal, you know, dickhead? You've got to, a degree, and you're spending your time. I heard about your parents' allowance they give you. I assume you're probably flopped out on your mom's couch right now. Listen to me. What are you going to do? What's the game plan to get off this stuff? I don't know. I mean, I, I, I really, right now, I just, want to launch my career and sounds uh, like it's not in good shape listen no, uh what not. okay I, so tell I danny just... about the withdrawals because you were talking to us a little bit about that but what happens if you stop cold turkey i've learned to manage withdrawals right now at, at this point and i definitely think i'd be uncomfortable like immediately you know in the media three to four days i the first immediate three to four days, I'd, mm. I'd probably be really pretty uncomfortable after, like, my body realized that it was just completely stopping. Yeah, he can do it. Uh, the only thing you can't go cold turkey off of is Xanax and alcohol. Everything else, you just stop. Listen, right. dude, you're trying to launch your career. That's fine. I got some news for you, though. I just looked at the Forbes list of the top 100 richest people in America. Only three or four of them are fentanyl addicts. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not impossible, but I think you're going to have a lot better shot if you get off the fent, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I mean... You realize that, right? It's, it's consuming a lot of my time. Oh, um, uh, yeah. A lot of my, a lot of my yeah, mental you, space. Like, absolutely. You couldn't even remember the noble gases, you stupid dummy. How about... You, how about you set up a little fentanyl drug deal, right? And then have me and Danny be there, and we'll just ransack the motherfucker. That's not, yeah. We'll beat the living shit out of the guy. And tell him to never sell you. That if he, if anyone yeah. in the area sells you uh -huh. any fentanyl or heroin or anything, we're gonna be there to beat the living shit out of them I love too. It. I love. <laughs> What's this guy's name? Uh, we can't. We don't use your real name. You said to go by Glibby or something. What was it? Gibby. Glizzy. Uh. Giebler. <laughs> yeah, Giebler. He said go by Giebler. You know what? I'm going to call him Loser Junkie Bastard. <laughs> loser Junkie Bastard? You got to demean him. All right, well, can we get check in? Every now and then we should check in with lo <laughs> <laughs> See, Leo, Loser Junkie Bastard. I like what you're saying, though, dude. Yeah. We we set up a drug deal. You right. and I and King, yeah. we're the muscle. We just pound this guy. Yeah. And then we have Loser Junkie Bastard. We give him a Cialis. <laughs> and while we're holding the guy down, Loser Junkie Bastard rushes him with a boner. Like he's going to rape him. <laughs> And we go, loser, junkie, bastard. No, 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 it's okay. We already sent our message. And then we whisper in the, the drug dealer's ear, mm -hmm. hey, this guy, he's gay, and he's got henchmen, and he's a fucking mm -hmm. rapist. Yep. So tell all your friends around town. Then we drop a $100 bill on the guy, the dealer. Of course. Spread the word right. that you don't want to be selling to this motherfucker right That's here. That's right, dude. That's and, right. And then he's not going to be able to get any fentanyl. He won't get any, dude. Now, on that note, uh, the fentanyl, you said you would choose fentanyl over sex 100 out of 100 times? What? He did. Wow. Right? Yeah, about nine times, yeah. And, uh, what about, what about the yeah. random hot broad, though? 
Yeah, what about with like a Brazilian ten? You know, natural, yeah, nice, huge like, ass. Yeah, that that like the exception. Yeah, something he loves the Brazilian girls, Leah. Oh, okay, that so was you got it. you got a Brazilian. You're a Brazilian girl fan. You Dude, were hitting I, on the wrong nations. Yeah, I guess. I so. got a question for Giebler or whatever. Call him by his real name. Lucy Junker, but something. <laughs> yeah. Lose, Is it a loser, loser, junky <laughs> bastard. <laughs> Yo, buddy. Yo, the so, King Croc. Is King Croc BBC? Wow, I'm excited. Yeah. My dad was pretty psyched on King Croc. Yeah. Dude, I love your dad. Yeah, your he was dad's fucking you. based. Yeah, he's pretty based, huh? I was wondering, though, man, how's it been going with the ladies, man? Since he got on this fin, because what I, from fun. what I heard, he doesn't have sex. Yeah. You don't have sex, dude. No. He said the only woman he'd have sex with is a Brazilian ten, yeah. which clearly this asshole doesn't have access to. Yeah, dude. Damn. So tell no, I, ask uh, him. But last time I had a go ahead, man. Was like, uh, last, year? last year. Yeah. Um, Were you or doing maybe about She looked like uh, one of those girls Brooks kissed in SF. Uh, <laughs> did she um, live on the streets I, or no? Uh, at the time, I was doing a lot of Xanax uh, when I met her, because as it, oh, and that's really boy. what led me to find a girlfriend is because I was just I was taking so much Xanax, like I took enough Xanax, and then like the next day I like woke up with a girlfriend basically. But wow, um, that's a shining endorsement for Xanax. You hear that, yeah, King? <laughs> you should be a well, pickup artist. Your methodology is based <laughs> on pills. I made a hinge. I made a hinge profile, and uh, I uh -huh. matched with this girl out in Denver, Colorado, and. What if his Blue. bio was honest? She flew to Arkansas. I, uh, I like to shoot Fent more than sex, but <laughs> my parents give me ten, 50 bucks a day. My parents give me 50 bucks a day. We can share the Fent. Um, if, if you have sex with, if you look like a Brazilian oh, 10, I will maybe not dose two times in an hour. I'll dose only once. Right, so tell me more about your girlfriend and your hinge profile. I'm sorry I cut you off. It's just, this is such a ripe opportunity for comedy here. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, no, no worries. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, she she flew from she flew uh, from Denver to Arkansas to visit me, and you know we had sunned in, you got him, and we we FaceTimed a couple of times, and uh, you know she like I was uh, I was uh, it was the summer it was during the summer like probably like two summers ago now maybe even three. Um, Lo a loser but, junkie bastard. I didn't even know what year it was yeah. when he had a girlfriend. <laughs> It was maybe loser junkie bastard. Listen to me. Uh, you okay? So the last one of the guys we talked to last time, or the other guy besides you, he six of his friends had died from fentanyl overdose. Have you had any deaths in your uh, in your friend group from fentanyl overdose? Um, uh, one very one one, um, and and um, like maybe uh, like more like a tertiary friend group or something tertiary he still got the big words to throw around big words, <laughs> so um. you <laughs> kid croc's dying dude so on a serious note though man we might have to do a video with you dude that'd be hilarious we go to his family's house that'd be dude. awesome oh my god in arkansas I yeah think would we you let us we take this guy gaming yeah street game oh, with dude, loser junkie I mean, bastard day game with loser junkie oh bastard? yeah dude i'm fucking down my question <laughs> yeah. to loser junkie bastard is yeah what kind of uh, uh, childhood did you have? Were you impoverished? Were you middle class, upper middle class? Dude, I think he was what Indian, exactly right? Happened? Dude, aren't you Indian? So I was born in Bangladesh, and yeah, we moved. Good. We moved to the United States in December wow. of nineteen ninety six, and that January so I turned white. three. So I'm twenty eight now, and you know, uh, so I've lived in the. Lived in the United States for 25 years, I guess, or whatever. You know, I was right here. Um, All right, dude, listen. You being Indian just furthers I'm my first. argument that you need to get the fuck off the fentanyl and get your career together because your people have the gene for success, and yeah. you are squandering that gift. Yeah. Your parents probably want to chop your head off with a machete. They yeah. probably want to charm a cobra, then make it bite you. <laughs> He's a, our son is a loser, donkey buster. <laughs> <laughs> is it possible that your mom or father has once said something along the line of, "My son is a loser, donkey buster"? I'm oh, sorry, dude. That's really fucked up. No, they've been. I've definitely. 
tested my parents or whatever. You've tested you know, your just, parents, yeah. Okay, by de- listen, dude, by decree okay. of the Leo and Danny Show podcast, mm-hmm. four fifths vote. Dino wants you to stay high. Mm-hmm. We want you to get sober. Yeah, dude. And we command it. We're gonna we're gonna remember this number. Uh, we will be calling loser junkie bastard <laughs> at least once a month on the Patreon pod and maybe on the regular pod and checking in. And we're gonna see how you're doing, buddy. We want you off the you fence. I okay. Yeah. I can dude, it's listen, killing dude, you. I fucking believe in you, bro. You're you're smacked out of your mind right now. Yeah, he is. <laughs> Yet you're pretty eloquent. Yeah. Right? So imagine if you weren't on those drugs. Yeah. Dude, you'd be a fucking machine. Mm. I like this is some AA shit I heard once that uh if you were high all the time, wouldn't you wanna be unhigh? Being unhigh and just sober would be like getting high if you were high all the time. It's the new high. It'd be the new high. Yeah. I like that. Like that's the thing. I just don't if it's not uh I'm always. I feel like I'm just chasing a high. Like you're always chasing a high. Start chasing uh, pussy instead, dude. Yeah, you gotta expand your horizons, kid. Pussy's, There's other things out. Pussy's pretty nice. Pussy. The great thing about the drug of pussy is that to get the pussy, you need to get your life together. Yeah, it's Whereas weird. You don't need to get your life together to get fentanyl. No, you just need forty or fifty dollars in a in a drug dealer <laughs> and some tinfoil. It's yeah, yeah. You do need tinfoil. You need fifty bucks and some rental wrap. I hide on the tin foil in the house. <laughs> no more, no more Reynolds rap. <laughs> oh my god! No more straws. Yeah, he he can, can smoke it with Daddy, these, I, his dude, snorts. Daddy, a video with two Indian parents with a fentanyl junkie. Oh, that'd be great, Daddy. Hey, can you? Would you allow us to film? Maybe we could blur everybody's face. Or was that? Would that be a lot of work? No, we could fucking do it. No problem. Yeah. Maybe me, you, your dad, and your mom can play cricket in the backyard. <laughs> no. And then Leo can Leo can ride it on an elephant. Dude, uh, would you would would we show up in full Indian garb? Of course, Leo. Uh, <laughs> just for just for the laugh, oh, yeah. the shits and giggles. Oh, we're gonna do yoga. We're gonna be vegetarian oh, for the whole shit. It'll be great. Um, It'll be awesome. Last question: uh, What is a banjo? Sorry, a what? when I a when I was a child, we played paintball in Northern California around the Modesto Turlock area where Leo went to college. It, as you know, Leo, there are a lot of Indians in that area. Oh, shit, yeah. And the one Indian I used to play paintball with a guy named Dave Baines, actually, who was Indian. And the Indian swear word that we would always say is banjo, banjo. And somebody told us it meant cocksucker and your native tongue. Is that true? Uh, it, it, it could be. I speak Bengali. I don't, I don't know. I don't really know. I don't know Hindi that well. Oh, uh, Hindi. But, yeah, I, I speak Bengali, but uh, <laughs> it, it, sound, it sounds like it, it, it definitely could be a, uh, <laughs> uh, a, uh, an, an insult of sorts. Uh, quick story yeah. real quick. Quick story real quick, uh, loser junkie sure. bastard. <laughs> Coming home, I came home from a paintball practice with this guy named Pepe Escucia. He played on the pro paintball team Avalanche. And paintball players, in my eyes, these were big sports stars. Like, forget Michael Jordan and Tom Brady. I had Dave Baines and Pepe Escucia. But most of these guys were rock bottom losers Mm -hmm. and drug addicts who were down the chain guys at like a tire shop or tattoo artists. Pepe Escucia was one of those guys. He told me a story once about how in his native Tempe, Arizona, he would commute up to Northern California to play. Some lady honked at him to go at an intersection because he was checking his phone or changing the radio station. So what does Pepe Escucia do? He gets out, lifts his shirt, and has a nine millimeter in Jesus. his belt line and just brandishes it at a chick. Yeah. That's how Pepe Escucia dealt with conflicts. And yeah. him and I drove by a truck on the way to a paintball field in Manteca, California. He looks up the window. He sees a guy who is clearly a Sikh Indian. Metal little wristband, the turban, the long beard. This guy is just Indian as shit. And Pepe Escucia just goes, May, after fucking 9-11... We got to keep an eye on these motherfuckers. <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs>
idiot. Dude. <laughs> nothing to do with 9-11. Nothing to do with it. Oh, completely different country. <laughs> <laughs> fucking Pepe is scared shit. Yeah, dude. people are fucking racist against you guys, dude. But, you know, I mean, uh, the 7-11 thing, you, anybody ever call, call like, make fun, say that you worked at 7-Eleven or anything like that? Oh, yeah. Those jokes were, you know, were pretty prevalent, you know, especially the area I grew up in, just mm. kind of... Uh, uh, <laughs> For, for this guy right now, working at 7-Eleven would be an upward move. Oh, yeah. Well, you see a lot of those guys own the 7-Eleven that they're, they just work it because, you know, they're saving a Save couple money. thousand a month. Yeah. They don't want to pay no employee wages. Nah, man. I wonder what owning a 7-Eleven is like financially. I heard 33% uh, of your anything that like goes to the 7-Eleven Corporation, which is high, but they're unbelievable businesses. They basically don't stop making money from the moment. They're 24 hours. And yeah. They just are money making machines. There's a guy down in Long Beach right now. They hopefully they caught this piece of shit who was holding him up and just shooting the people behind the counter. <gasps> fuck. Whoa. Yeah. Damn. Which is like he would take the money, then just shoot them. What which the is fuck? automatic. Like you are if you use a, a weapon in a robbery, fifty years. It makes it so um, much more serious. And if yeah. you kill somebody during a robbery, Done. I think you might be up for the death penalty. Yeah. But it's absolutely a guaranteed life in prison. For like yeah. three hundred bucks. Yes, yeah, retarded. Pe yeah. People are so dumb. <laughs> it's it's the yeah, the ignorance is the root of all evil, you know what I mean? Croc and I have conversations about this all the time. Of like, what if criminals were just like intelligent about their crimes? Like, instead of robbing a gas station, you go steal some tools out of the back of a guy's truck. Yeah. And those things are worth thousands of dollars. Like, there's there so many smarter ways to yeah. steal things mm -hmm. than a gas station. Or you go Dude. to some financial YouTuber's channel. Somebody did this recently. They there's a guy I watch for crypto and stock videos. Somebody made a perfect replica of his Instagram and they bought a shitload of fake followers, like 80,000 followers. And I followed the guy because I'm a fan or I thought I followed the guy. And then the account starts messaging me about investing. Oh, God. I know oh, right away it's a scam, shit. but so many people look up to this YouTuber like a god yeah. that I know this scam gets a ton of people. They're like, oh my God, he, he reached out to me to invest? Here, my life savings have. Put it. Mm. Put it in your crypto fund. That's some smart thievery. Damn. Is Not it, uh, is it uh, uh, the guy that gets pussy, dude? What's his name? Fucking... I don't think this guy gets oh, well. Okay. He's he's pretty rich. He probably gets a little bit of pussy. Who's the guy who gets pussy? Ty thought, Lopez. Yeah, I thought it was Ty Lopez. No. He has like some invest thing on his story recently. Brando, all the way up there. Ty Lopez. Yeah. Can we can we pull up Ty Lopez's Instagram and it's show great. it to the audience? It's he's smart. I, I love the way I love his work. I like on it. His Instagram. I like it. Loser junkie bastards just fucking hanging with us. Oh yeah. So I showed uh, Leo what? this. What's that, loser junkie bastard? <laughs> no, sounds crazy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> look who look who he's right. following austin yeah go to following yeah i bet it's just fucking million. pussy it dude. is all leo's target demo just all of 20 course. year old smoking hot Brando, no no oh fine did you get that dino legend dude you recorded it yeah Okay, I'll edit it in. Legend. Right. You got it? Yeah, Dino looked like he got it. Hey, <laughs> hey, parkour McGee, dude. You good? <laughs> dude, Brando just down pulled down? the gnarliest parkour. Wow, dude. He just got up on top of our room Brando. divider, which is probably an inch and a half wide <laughs> yeah. up top. Yeah, he got he was balancing up there for a while, and then he uh, then he had to eject, dude. He had to hit the eject. <laughs> that was sick. Ali I like how Leo didn't even panic. He's, nah, like, oh, he's, good. he's a boy. Yeah. Cats, yeah, dude. They, they're fucking unbelievable, dude. Dude, cats are bad. Badass. Like, he's yeah. fine. Yeah, he's fine. Can you film dude. him? Can you film him? Dude, he's totally yeah. fine. Yeah, cats are fucking unbelievable. They're pretty sick. Yeah. Cats, I was... So, what we talked about last podcast, my cat killed a fucking turkey. Mm. Also, the amazing thing is about cats is you could leave my cat and your cat just at a truck stop and they would live. Yeah. Like, they would just be fine. They they survive, man. Yeah, they, they pick up. I mean, Brando, I don't know. He might get hit by a car, but your cat, for sure, could, you could leave him in a truck. So I think Brando would have a better chance than a dog, 100%. Oh, yeah. No, of course. dude. Leo, you spoil the guy too I much. spoiled him, but I train him, dude. I throw treats in the air, and he's catching them, and he, he kill, he's killed two flies that came into the house on his flies. own. He chased flies. it down. <laughs> well, what do you mean? In the, in the wild, he could catch a bunch of flies and eat them all. It no, he needs them. to be killing Ooh. rats, we're looking squirrels, at, we're dogs. Looking, sorry, we're looking at Ty Lopez's pussy right now. Sorry, yeah. I'm a little distracted. Keith Carroll, not bad, not bad. He follows one of he follows one of Mia's friends. 
Yeah, 41,000. You know, those are very uh, attainable. But he mid follows thought, mid level Instagram thoughts. Always good. You know, he follows the like the shady 1,000 follow or mm -hmm. girls who are at a community college. Yeah, that he does too. See, yeah. let's let's look for some of the lower profile girls, Austin. Awesome. I know it's hard girl. to tell. No, th th that one, for example. Bam! Yeah. Yes. There we go. Those are the Ty ones. Ty Lopez Damn. is banging Ellen. Those are the ones. I see what you mean, bro. You know what like, I mean? Like, yeah, like, yeah. Normal mid level. Chicks. He Fox. follows a lot of those girls. Up here, this is all of his big time blue checks. But if we get down lower, you're gonna see more pussy. Or maybe he cleaned it up. Maybe he realized that wasn't. You're right. Look at Aldina. No, nah, dude, they're still Sophia. Here, yeah, they're, yeah. They're, that girl that oh, 400 no. followers. She looks I like no posts, me. bro. He just met her in person, maybe or not. Nah, who knows? That, it could but, be a bro, bot. You, you know what I wonder? Are these chicks getting flown out? And maybe, yeah. Getting uh, their backs broken all the time. Maybe. Yeah. Why not with him? Yeah, dude, if you got enough money, why not? I don't care. I'm flying broken. bitches out, bro. Dude, the thing I don't is, care. King Croc, listen, you can fly a bitch out, but yeah. you, we, I think me and Danny, we we always, how well, how do how much income do you think, uh, how much money does he have to have in the bank to fly a girl out, Danny? To fly a bitch out? Yeah, because it can't be your first fucking paycheck that you make, you know what I mean? Yeah, I, I oh, whoa. Oh. Danny, you should start flying my bitches out for me, dude. That'd be, you know what? Expensive, if right? we get a girl who's like, I want to fuck the shit out of King Croc, I love him, I will absolutely handshake deal fly that bitch out for you, King. I got dude, you. Coach Cuck would totally Danny let Mullen's it happen, guy. He's, Yeah, yeah. He's I think so. I want to watch that if that happens, because that girl's hot. Oh, yeah. Can I watch you fuck if I fly the chick out? Sure, bro. Hell yeah. I like the King Crocs now with that shit. Okay, yeah, no. Ty Lopez, the question becomes, awesome. because Ty Lopez... He has the most beautiful houses all over the world. I mean, if you think about it, what incentive does he have to ever stop flying 20-year-olds out, popping a bottle of Dom, and getting his cock sucked in an infinity pool? Yeah, I know. <laughs> what incentive does he have to stop doing that? He Dude, why'd older? you have to describe that? God, that's a nice <laughs> life. Dude, That's I was thinking about that. Is that not the fantasy to get blown yeah. in an infinity pool up in the hills with yeah. a bottle of champagne? Yeah. It sounds pretty nice, huh, Leo? Sounds nice, Yeah, dude. this one's pretty shady. I'm such a loser. <laughs> well, I'm the loser junkie bastard, dude. I should have that infinity pool already. Let's, let's see if he likes... A thousand likes, followers? Let's see if he likes her pictures. We gotta, yeah, search. These girls look like they might be fake. Like, they're probably, like, Russians trying desperately to get over to America. Uh, can, can we tell? Uh, it's a little... We're on the desktop app of it. Hey. If you go all the way to the top, you can type in... If you're Ukrainian, hit me oh, up the top. on Instagram. It's, it's, the, oh, no. it's, oh, it's, it's the desktop. It's a little yeah. weird. King Croc BBC. King, I got you, dude. If we get some fucking puss that wants some king, we can call Kevin the cuck at some point. Well, okay, start doing this for us, King Croc. If there's a girl that really about does. about to be so sexy. Like, yeah. you guys don't understand. I Man, love he it. He doesn't get it. Like, I love it. King, I fucking back it, dude. Big I'm the only Bruce. black dude in the crew. You realize that, right? Yeah. Actually. Well, All right, yeah. maybe there's another. Barber, yeah, barber maybe shop, Evan. But Evan, uh, shut up, Dino. Dino said hey, calls, about me. talk shit to Barbershop Evan. <laughs> Listen, him. Evan got Call nothing on me, Tom. bro. Yeah. I'm bigger than the guy. I'm fucking more muscular than the guy. When I turn into a man, Dingo, I'm going to be. Yeah. There's no comparison. Listen, right? Kid So I'm a fetish, a fantasy. Yeah. Right. Don't get jealous, Danny. I'm. <laughs> <laughs> King Croc, how would it, how would you feel right now if God came in here and he's like, King Crocodile, right now we will play a game. And you're like, God, I don't want to play a game. And he's like, too bad, we are playing. I flip a coin. If heads, you keep your current penis. If tails, you have a two-inch cock. What if God flipped the coin and it was tails? Oh. How would you feel about yourself? That would destroy my self esteem. All right. Well, let me a little story you have to real change quick. Your Instagram. Man. A yeah. little. Uh, this is a little <laughs> this uplifting. Here's an uplifting Beans penis story. Penis size story. We we know our 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 favorite autistic big guy Bailey, right? Yeah. From the uh, Mia's uh, birthday video, the shit I give her shit for her birthday video. He is he's autistic, right? And he has a small penis. Remember his penis? You you saw it. I think so. Unfortunately, was, micro. Yeah, yeah. He's got a very hot black girlfriend right now hmm. like a, she's hot, she's fucking looks great body and he's banging her dude mm -hmm. and they're going steady and he's killing it going steady there's a white guy you're talking about the white dude, guy he with played a... for the raiders right or something like that jacksonville jaguars left yeah <laughs> oh shit we were lying to check we were lying we were lying to sophia that was a great party uh, king 
Oh my god, that'd be bad. Yeah, if a, if a chick fucks a black dude and he's got a, like a below average dick, it sucks that that's. It sucks that that they're ex all, like all of you guys are expected to have seven inches plus. Yeah, it's bro. pretty fucked up, and you're just so lucky that you have a big cock. Yeah, man. I thank God every night. Yeah, really? dude. All this this in shape shit, you can handle that. You have no control over your cock size. You lucked out where it mattered. Maximize the shit you can control. Absolutely. And what, what is uh? Have, what is it? What you've been doing? You lost a few pounds for sure, but what you've been doing? Dieting, <laughs> supplementation. Uh, yeah, <laughs> supplementation. <laughs> well, that's not new. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm fucking getting that shit. But listen, the funds are a little low right now. Mm. When my funds go up, I will literally become an alien. You don't I'm need not that joking. shit. What do you need funds for? Don't take it's steroids. Cause. I'm taking mad supplementation, no, bro. No, dude. I'm taking my own DNA into my hands. You know, the only supplements you need are celery and H2O. Loser Junkie I Bastard knows about that one. What? I heard you talking about new tropics. What, what are what are those exactly? You should know, Mister Biochem asshole. You know Alpha Brain that uh that uh Rogan is Rogan's company. It's just like supposed to help you get into the flow state and. Nah, dude. It's all about That's Ultra Mega Brain. That's pretty funny. Austin started a company called Ultra Mega Brain. Do you have a sale? <laughs> I think I sold one. Sold one. Not it, bad. How did? What, tell me about this, Austin. I'm sorry I've missed a bunch of he, stuff. What's going on? I like it. The Ultra MAGA brain, which is a play off how Biden has been trying to brand Trump supporters. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Do you love how, <laughs> I'm sure you guys have been up on it, how the, the White House is trying to redefine recession? Yeah, dude, that's just ridiculous. Jesus. It's real sketchy. Did you hear about this, King? Uh, a little bit. So the White House, they know they're toast in November for the midterms. I don't know all the implications from that because I failed student government in high school, but a lot of Congress and Senate and shit is going to go over to the Republicans. Yeah, They know that the economy is going to be the number one thing that turns out Republican voters and makes Democrats maybe vote for more conservative people too. The economy's not doing well. So what is the White House doing? They're redefining how to define a good economy or a poor economy so that they can claim the economy's good. Dude, they've been, like, scrambling. The, the interviewers will ask them questions, and they're like, well, it's not really a recession yes. because we're not saying it is. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so a recession forever, and it's on the Google knowledge bar, is defined by two quarters where GDP, our gross domestic product as a country, has gone down. That's happened. But now they're saying, well, wait a second. We don't really see that as a recession because this other stuff. There's some job growth over there, huh? Huh? Which is absurd. Rats. They are everybody's rats. basically rats. everybody's working for Uber, Uber Eats, uh, you know, the the Instacart, and Amazon pretty much. Yeah, but everyone's also quitting Uber Eats and Instacart and stuff like that because the gas prices have gotten so high that you mm -hmm. can't even yeah, make that's money why doing it's it. It's so expensive to get any of those. So people you know? relying on that have been completely fucking screwed over. Yeah. Yeah, I, and I'm not saying it. I hate the mindset that, oh, the economy's bad, boo-hoo-hoo, -hoo. I'm, I'm going to have to be poor now. That's a loser mindset. I think your attitude should be bad economy, good economy, I'm taking care of myself and I'm making money. Bad economy means good investing time. Sure, sure. Yeah, right now, I think it's it's a good time to to buy. I think it might even go lower, but right, how much lower could the stock market really go? Uh, a lot lower, keep dude. Going lower. It, it, could, it could go a lot lower, man. That's crazy. It'll probably be low for another like two years plus. It could be. Yeah, yeah and there could be a massive drop off, dude. <sighs> Who knows? I mean, we shut down the economy for a year and a half, two years artificially. We pumped a shitload of money into the economy, and now even more is getting pumped in. Some new green deal just got passed. If he you look passed. how far, uh, yeah, Manchin changed his mind, or yeah, Manchin, Joe Manchin, he changed his mind. So I think that's going to go through now or something. But if you look at how far stocks have fallen, it's really not that bad considering what the fuck just happened with the pandemic. So I'm a little suspicious. I think everybody should invest right now steadily, but start saving up your nut a little bit. Start stashing a little bit of cash. So if there is a catastrophic... You buy some real estate at that time. Buy some real estate or just buy a little bit of stock. <clears throat> because real estate in LA is, is basically unattainable.
at this it's point, so I mean, fucking it's expensive. so expensive, yeah. So, yeah, just buy a, just well, buy a little stock. I mean, there's some decent houses around here right now, like two bedrooms for like 800 Danny, right around uh, you and me. The housing market is facing like a pretty big crash right now. Mm -hmm. Like I was watching a video from some real estate agents, and they were talking about how a house uh, a year or two ago would have offers like the day you listed it and now like they're not hardly getting any and yeah the price my is dad's getting low. pumped he's uh he's looks he always looks for like some kind of shady little fucked up house in the hills to make a low ball offer on when things are tanking mm -hmm. so it's getting close to that time it's getting there mm -hmm. it's yeah. getting close to tank time tank time yeah i read an article in the la times today how there's one market in the housing industry that's thriving right now, and it's luxury condos. Hmm. For some reason, and I'm talking hyper luxury condos, twenty million dollar places. Jeez, really? For some reason, those are going through the roof. I think it's a combination of, well, not really a combination. I think that what's going on is it's it's one factor that's influencing people to buy them. The crime in L.A. Yeah, super rich people. They know that if they buy the twenty million dollar house in the hills. A, a crip might follow them back to their driveway and pull out a Glock. Mm -hmm. But if you own a luxury condo, you got a doorman, you got on-site security, yep. you have to have key card access. It's really hard to rob anything or any person in a building as opposed to a house. Oh, yeah. Good there was a lady in Beverly Hills last year who got fucking robbed and shot in her parlor. It's sketchy, dude. Some billionaire from China. You think he wants to take that risk? Some racist billionaire from China. You think he's going to move here nah. and be psyched on the prospect of getting robbed? Mm -mm. No, you're right. Uh, also, I mean, the not having to worry about maintaining a yard, uh, about painting your mm -hmm. house, because all that's taken care of with H HOA is yeah. kind of, it's pretty nice. I think long term, a lot of people like uh, are getting it going more in that direction as it is. Like, well, let me ask Leo because mm -hmm. it seems like you're pushing this whole thing really hard, right? And <laughs> buying a condo, <laughs> like, you're basically a condo salesman. Well, I'm thinking, right? Let's look at companies like BlackRock. Uh -huh. Right, BlackRock strolls up. We want to buy this whole shit. They talk to your fucking the board, the executives. Mm -hmm. What? control or power as a person mm -hmm. do you as a condo owner have over their acquisition of well, that asset once what, you what when you, you owe when you yeah, i think it's just if one person in the in the in the hoa in that area doesn't want to sell they won't sell you have oh really everybody oh. owns the space you own it legally the space that your condo is in and above and i think it's it, it, this was a question on the real estate exam. It goes a, a little bit of the airspace above your condo too. If it has a, a like an open air roof or some or like a you know a little deck on top, which some condos might have, you own the space above it as well. So yeah, I think everyone would have to agree for you for you for them okay. to be able to sell the property. And if they ever do sell a property like that, usually you get double or sometimes more than what the property's worth because the company, it's a huge company and they're going to make a gigantic profit. They could probably level everything. Mm -hmm. So in order to get everybody out of there, they're going to have to pay the big bucks usually. Everybody gets together and they agree on a price type thing. So it usually ends up being profitable in the end if you, if you, are all, if you stay in the property till its end, which more than likely you're not. You'll probably die before that happens. I just have fears because I see a dystopian <laughs> future where the CCP... BlackRock, mm -hmm. the elites, they buy all the assets and they leave the peasants to eat bugs mm. and live in tents or some shit. I mean, right? that could happen. That's, King why you, that's why you got to fucking ball out, make money, and be an asset holder yourself, King. Hey, uh, jo Loser Junkie, can we? I think we're going to say uh, farewell because there is a little bit of static on the line I'm hearing. Is that all right, Austin? Can we cut him loose? Mm -hmm. But we're going to check in on you, buddy. We're going to check in on you, and, and good luck, my friend, and uh, I'm praying for you still. Yeah, I am, too. I'm going to hit the knees all right, right after this pod. See you, big Later, dog. buddy. He's right. a nice kid, right? Bye. See you. Bye, buddy. Bright kid. Yeah. Yeah, King. They can't force a real estate sale from you unless you're a minority living next to a freeway. Yeah. And they want to expand that thing. Eminent and, domain. Eminent domain. Well, <laughs> Keith Rock, I mean, yeah. I mean, I don't even know what that is. If you're renting, that's it, what you're talking about. Oh, if yeah. you're renting a house, yeah, they can just come in and be like, peace, the hell out of here. They did that to Adam's parents. Mm -hmm. Adam's parents were renting like a $5 million, maybe a $6 million mansion over in Brentwood. And what? the owner was like, get the fuck out unless you pay me 10 million bucks for the house. Oh, yeah. And his parents just had to leave. Damn. It was a sick house. The yeah. it was parents well, were renting. Brentwood, yeah, dude. That's probably one of the it's one of the I think Brentwood's probably it's it's definitely
close to the nicest part of Los Angeles as far as the, the homes, mm -hmm. individual homes there. Mm -hmm. And there's Beautiful. mad bitches in Brentwood. Oh, yeah. The king. <laughs> Fu and I, one of my single days, we used to pop Adderall, get liquored up in his house, just blasting Metallica. And his parents were just always gone at some extravagant dinner. So we just had the whole house. We would go out to the Santa Monica bars, get pussy, bring it back to this mansion. <laughs> No. Their jaw would be scraping the driveway as we walked up to the front door. And once the bitches see the mansion, dude, oh, their panties are off. Yeah, it's done. It's, it's done at that point. Off. <laughs> and they had a pool and a hot tub in the backyard. Oh, Huge man. trees surrounding the property. So total privacy. It was a fuck pad. It was That's a awesome. fuck pad. Sick. I dude, I I never had like such a good hookup like that. That sounds unbelievable. Yeah, you gotta get it for yourself. I'll, I'll have, I mean, when my when Julio when pops, uh, he, he had that fixer, the fixer in the hills. You never came that. to that house, but I never came to it. I remember you and I did an Instagram <laughs> live where you were puffing a cigar on the balcony, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So basically, that place it made me want to have a place with a view for the rest of my life because when I would bring girls there and with my buddies and everything, they were immediately it was like their pussy would get wet as soon as they saw the view. It was like. Oh, they would walk in and just walk over the window and be like, oh, my God, what an amazing view. And it was just like that you had like this weird kind of power over them. It was it was nice. Leo, listen to this. This is piggybacking on what you're saying. Mm -hmm. So I went out with Mia and some friends, some girls that she knew, too, and Adam Fu and some girls that he had. We went out on the Sunset Strip during my vacation. We went to... Harriet's, I think. Mm -hmm. You probably know where that mm -hmm. is. West Hollywood. A really high-level... I think it's on the ninth floor of a high rise that's already elevated up in the hills. Beautiful. You can see the whole city, luxury place. We start taking shots of tequila. Nice. Then we hit the Whiskey A Go Go, nice. where Vel Lavello was playing. Hell yeah! And Sam was there too. Really? Even though he's no longer a part of the band. That's cool. We go there, get fucking wasted during yeah. like just all the band's performances. That place is fun to get hammered at. By the I way, I love it with the whiskey. Yeah, yeah, super yeah, fun. Yeah. Then we hit the Rainbow. We hit nice. the fucking rainbow. We're finishing up there, too. The girls want to do blow, so I'm, like, negotiating with the staff. Like, hey, if you bring, if you bring me back a baggie, $100 extra goes to you on top no. of the cost of the blow. After that, we just all had to go back to our apartments and pass out, and it wasn't very exciting. What if you had a house right above the Sunset Strip, not only with a view of the entire lit-up city, <sighs> But with the pool in the backyard, I'd be over in the hot tub. I mean, that's it, Danny. I mean, I don't think you you have to do much else. You can attain that with like a little like two bedroom, like a thousand square feet in that area. That's fucked up. It would be like one point five million. So that's what you need to do. I've looked on Zillow because mm -hmm. I, I fantasized many times about the scenario. I don't think one point five is going to get it done. It's probably yeah. You're. Right. I mean yeah. I mean I'm I'm talking about a fucked up house. It it would be like not even livable. You need to like put more money into it. But like maybe five million bucks, dude. You yeah. gotta have five million yeah. because the ones that are lower, you can get a nice three million dollar one up there, but uh -huh. they don't have pools. Yeah. And if you want to come back from the rainbow, King Croc, and pull out the BBC, you need a pool. All right, it's not the same to get it done on a couch or in the bathtub. What's annoying about a five million dollar house is that's one percent goes to taxes. What is that fifty thousand every year? It's Danny, just like four grand a month just gone. Yeah, it's pretty fucked up. Yeah. It's what a king croc. You gotta hate that property taxes. That property after you buy your sucks. house, you have to keep buying your house. Essentially, yeah. it's commie shit. Yeah. It is commie shit. Yeah, it's yeah. like every. Basically, every two generations, every hundred years, if it's a 1% tax, you have to buy it back from the government. Uh -huh. yeah. Austin, did you, I forget if you told me this or somebody else did, somebody told me that originally in Marxist theory, 50% tax rate was considered communism. That was, that was Lenin's, Vladimir Lenin's like ideal form of communism mm. was you give 50% back and you keep 50%. We're living in Lenin's utopia right now. Yeah, dude. It's fucked Thanks, up. Thanks, Gavin Newsom. Hey, dude. We really fucking love you, buddy. He's going to try to run for president. I'm pretty sure. And he is, dude. Sure. I hope he's the nom. Dude. Did you see the Florida Everybody ads? Everybody would fucking hate him. Did you see the Florida ads he was running? No. He was you didn't running... hear about this? No, no. So he was running ads in Florida trying to persuade people to move to California. We what? can pull him up what? right now. It's really hard. to. It's not really hard, but it took me a while to find the actual ad. A lot of it is just commentary on the ad. But he's saying things like... 
are you in Florida and are you tired of schools cracking down on what textbooks your children can read and what conversations they can have in the classroom? Whoa. Come to California where we still believe in free speech. And I just went, ha, we still believe in free speech in California. Yeah. Tell that to Twitter. Wow. Tell that to Twitter. What a fraud. Fucking yeah, this is interesting. Let's see. He is kind of a handsome dude and for sure does blow and f fucks young chicks, though. Uh, Bro, I, I, know I, I might just vote for him based on that. Let's see. A lot of it's, a lot of it's commentary. <laughs> Let's see. It's Independence Day. It's all Let's talk oh, about is. what's going on in America. Freedom? It's under attack in your state. Your Republican leaders? They're banning books, making it harder to vote, restricting speech in classrooms, even criminalizing women and doctors. The ad goes on to encourage Florida residents to, quote, join the fight for freedom or move to California. Oh, yeah, that looks fun. This is actually hilarious. <laughs> what, if he was, what if he was honest? Like, the only thing that I love about Florida is the blow directly from Columbia. Uh, that'd be great. If he was honest, he that, might. Uh, he but, could win it if he was honest. I get more pussy than Donald Trump. I'm going to be honest. That would be good. No, no. Did you see that? They just showed that clip of like a fucking BLM insurrection if, as if that's going to be any sort of incentive look to move this, to dude. California. Know, like, <laughs> look at what we're doing. <laughs> this guy will throw a Molotov through your business window. <laughs> move to California. And he won't be arrested. <laughs> or he'll be let go the next day. He'll be let go the next day to commit the crime again. Dude, I'm pretty sure the, the chick who got cracked with the metal rod in LA the Olympia athlete did you see that mm -mm. this Olympic uh volleyball player was oh in LA and she just looks at a homeless guy oh. and then looks back at her friends and the homeless guy just chucks a big metal is there rod a video of it or just an article about it dude Brando is so this cute is right now I can't yeah. help it yeah he's unreal He's eating his, uh, which I think, Danny, there's only one or two brands that do this kind of like a go gurt style, like whipped up, like tuna snack for cats. And they're unbelievably uh, 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 popular. We should make our own brand, the Danny Mullen do they cat taste, go gurts. It tastes good. Or <laughs> yeah, I'm in, dude. Uh, I'm, I'm putting dude, everything I own into it. Yeah, let's do it, dude. <laughs> it, it, it'll be better yeah, than Cloud Kid Gobi. Oh, dude, that's how we'll find. Oh, my God. Poor girl. That's how yeah. we're going to get our $5 million <laughs> house. Yes, dude. He's so cute. Mando, man, you enjoy that? Yeah, she got enjoy that? messed up. And then something crazy also happened recently. I'm trying to think. Yeah, I've been a little bit out of the news cycle. Last week, I was just unplugged, not really watching anything where do you but, get your news dude yeah. i struggled i now i've been going to, to twitter on the, the news tab it's I, pretty good the, the problem with twitter is you just get so many people on the extreme fringes commenting and getting all the likes and retweets yeah. i um so i read the la times mm -hmm. so i have a super liberal perspective mm -hmm. and then i listen to the ben shapiro show no way dude look at this oh Brando. yeah but the guy who cracked her with that pipe had been let out of jail like three times in the last like three weeks yeah. for assaulting other people. Yeah. So the same of shit course. that we saw in San Francisco, basically. Same okay. shit. Okay. So I I always thought that I've never had bums kind of step up to the plate like they would be down to fight me until recently. They, I'm fucking he one one guy black black guy. Uh, he's just saying shit to everybody going by, and I was like, this, he's not gonna say anything to me. And he goes, I don't care how big you are, motherfucker. That's all he said to me. And I was like, I, if I was a hothead, I would have been like, shut the fuck up, bitch, or something. But I just kept walking. Damn. But yeah, dude, what the fuck, dude? And then another guy said, he was like, I was literally 20 feet away from him on a, on a fucking scooter, on like a lime scooter. And he goes, don't run me over. I was like, what the fuck, dude? I was, I'm 20 feet away from you. You're probably driving recklessly. It's like fucking talking. Goomba. <laughs> Goomba dude. I wrote an article in the LA Times recently about homelessness and... We debate a lot what it's going to take to get these people off the streets. Is it even possible? Mm. Dude, I read this article. So these journalists, they did a great job. It's it's like a novella in the, in the L.A. Times. Long, short story format style thing. Tracking this woman who lives in an L.A. Hollywood tent city right above the freeway and gets fucking pregnant. This bitch is living amongst junkies. Ugh. People with HIV, syphilis. The guy who got her pregnant actually had HIV, oh. but it didn't transfer to her. And she tells the story. They interview her. You're like, yeah, what? What, so what happened to the uh, father? And she's like, oh, shit. She's a, a white chick. She's like a like a ghetto punk rocking heroin junkie white chick. She's like, oh yeah, he was the baby daddy, but now he just wanders around Denny's talking to himself. Oh my god. That's what happened to the father. So uh -oh. they deploy 
the entire arsenal of homelessness services. Everything under the sun, top level. They put her in an apartment for free. A really, really nice apartment. Downstairs, there's a top-of-the-line homeless children daycare center that totally watches the child whenever she needs to do anything. Mm -hmm. They give her drug counseling. They give her job training. She gets certified as a forklift driver. That finally explains how Rat Dick Ralph was able to achieve that feat. A homeless junkie <laughs> bitch can do it. They give her bus fare, transportation to her possible job sites. Everything's good, right? It seems like this chick's going to turn around. No. She doesn't show up to any of her jobs because, according to her, she'll get anxiety if she rides the bus. So there, first of all, is just the ridiculous cop-out. Like, everything's Bullshit. been provided for you, mm -hmm. and you're still making excuses. Then she starts complaining about... And this is like the common complaint whenever they try to get these people in a shelter. Her complaint is that she doesn't want to stay in this beautiful apartment because her friends can't visit at any time. And she's oh, lonely. Yeah, I bet. Yeah, yeah, her friends. You know, real uh, real scholars and diplomats, those friends of hers. Mm -hmm. You know, none of them have pockets full of drugs. None of them are going to walk in uh, crazed out of their mind. She can't fentanyl. sell some pussy. <sighs> she can't sell her pussy. There we go. That'd be a lot easier than operating a forklift. Yes, Austin? So, eventually, the quote that really pissed me off, and also, also it comes out that she'd had two children prior to this. She's 22 Whoa. or 23 years old and has three children. It comes out, or she says this, rather, and this is what made me just want to throw the laptop out the window. All these people are telling me what to do, and I'm like, I'm a grown-ass woman. You can't tell me what to do. And I wanted to say, no, you're not. <laughs> you have three yeah. children, no money to your name, and you're a yeah. hopeless drug addict who yeah. the state has done everything in their power to hold your hand into respectability. And you're you're kicking and screaming the whole way. You're not an adult. You're mm -hmm. a child. You're and that's the mindset. There and I we can all relate to that. There have all been times in our lives, I know for me it's true, that we've had that childlike mentality where we needed help and we were ineffective and waking up late and just being douchebags and broke. So I kind of related, but I just thought, oh, that's the problem. There's no accountability in these people's minds. Mm -hmm. They just want to use their drugs and fucking die, basically, because yeah. they can't take responsibility for themselves. Yeah. And then the she... Fuck it mentality. So now what is what happened to her? She just went back to using drugs on the Hollywood freeway. I'm and sorry. And the children I, got taken away from her. I was going to say, okay, the children got taken away. Mm -hmm. and, and what about the one in the belly? I, I forgot if you said... It, it was birthed. It was, it birth. was down at the, the top of the line daycare unit. It got taken away, too. Good. Because she just started relapsing. She stopped cleaning the apartment. She squandered everything they provided for her. Now, the, the what, so they go to foster care, and I guess... That is just guaranteed molestation. I don't yeah. know what that means. They turn into porn stars, 100%. Mm -hmm. They turn into porn stars or felons. Felons or are their guy. Jobs. He was a foster child? Yeah. Wow. Isn't that nuts? Or school think... shooters. Or school or shooters. School... Did you think so? Dude, foster a lot system? of them, man. Yeah, dude. Like, even the one most recently, foster cared. I always thought it would be awesome to be a foster kid when I was a kid. You know oh, what I mean? yeah. <laughs> yeah. What do you think about public sterilization? <laughs> that'd, be, that'd be great. People that'd be like great. That. I mean, see, that's a, that's we were talking about. We're talking about abortion. That's a big issue right now. But I don't think anybody in this room would have a problem with the state telling that chick, "Hey, you need to have a fucking abortion," mm -hmm. because we are not get putting this child into the planet. Okay, yeah. we're not doing it. Somehow, somehow those babies come out healthy. Sometimes it's nuts. It's it was healthy. How, yeah, it's crazy how nature works. I don't know how that's possible. Yeah. Croc and I were talking, though, about these, like, school shooters and shit. Instead of just, like, okay, yeah, they they'll, they see it as, okay, I go to life in prison or whatever, or maybe I'll kill myself. And it's like, no, we should literally have these guys, like, put up publicly, like, mm -hmm. Jesus on the cross, and, like, cut their balls yeah. off, and then have, like, retarded kids throw tomatoes mm -hmm. at them yeah, we, we've and I just think we humiliate about, yeah. the shit out yeah. of them. Cruel and unusual punishment. Me and Danny always, yeah. we, we said that they should that should be the one thing they should kind of allow yeah. again. If we have irrefutable evidence of your guilt in a heinous crime, that way we rule out any of like the, uh, we're 98% sure he did it. No, if we've got you on HD closed circuit security camera gunning down a kindergarten, we tie you behind a Corvette Mm -hmm. And we drag you down the 101. Yeah, and it's got to be live. 
Yeah. Yeah. Everybody, everybody in the whole country gets to watch. People get seats. You get seats. Yeah. yeah. Sell tickets. Yeah. TTS. Absolutely. Put yeah. up some grandstands. Sell popcorn. Sell corn dogs. Luxury you know, boots. Beers. The Daddy yeah. Mala Channel will get a luxury. Oh, we boot get a luxury sure. boot to it. It's like the UFC. There's like a there's a pay per view system. Oh, that'd be awesome. <laughs> it'd be so. I I love it. Great. You know how many problems that would solve? Oh, so many. And it just and for little crimes, we just be like, hey, if you do it twice. I don't care if it's basic shoplifting or petty theft. You're getting drugged behind the Corvette. Yeah. Or you're going to get, we're going to give you a trident and you have to fight a grizzly bear. That'd be amazing, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. See, I don't understand why. Uh, yeah, I mean, in other countries, obviously, they've uh, they've used this kind of idea to stop crime. I think there was a huge problem with theft in England. And then they, or no, no, knife fights. Gangs yeah. would like fight. And then they said, you get caught by the cops with a knife on you, five years guaranteed in prison. Mm -hmm. That stopped it immediately. Yeah. Like, who's going to carry a knife then? It's incentives, dude. That's why there was so much theft in San Francisco. As you guys saw in that 4th of July video, there were zero incentives to get a job and quit stealing. Yeah, that one guy was, everything's free in the stores, guys. Everything's free around here. Yeah, we didn't even show that in the video. Nah. But a dude said that who just came out of Whole Foods. Yeah, Yeah, and then the security guard at Whole Foods showed us, and I don't know, maybe it was 2 o'clock in the afternoon. It was or it was early. It was still like 1. Yeah. And 20 pictures on his phone of people yeah. that day that had just looted up backpacks and walked out of the store. That Whole Foods needs to close that location. There was a Whole Foods directly <laughs> across from the safe injection site. Yeah, it's done. They were still, they had some hot chicks coming in and out, though. I think, uh, I'm gonna they, piss real quick. I'm gonna piss real quick. I think, uh, personally, I, uh, I don't know that there is really gonna be much we can do for many years until I don't, I, until they get like kind of like somebody does some like a, like, corrupt kind of mafia type shit to get the bums out what do you think about that just mm. you know get the fuck out of here i don't care where you go but don't i don't want to see you in la type shit like go out to palmdale you fucking junkie yeah we need like some kind of candidate that has like muscle right he's not he's not vanilla he's kind of scary it's got to be a little like yeah like, like giuliani the rumor is that that's what right. he did in new york right when new york was like this we need and new york sober prisons like sober prisons. you you separate the drug addicts from the actual criminals. Yeah. And if you get caught with like heroin or something, you get locked in a box for 35 days until you're sober. That's yeah, okay, okay, that saved two of my friends' lives so far was getting caught by the cops when they were junkies and being put in jail for like a couple of months so that they sobered up off the heroin and they all got and they both of them got their lives together after that. Mhm. Mm yeah, it'll happen. I mean, there's a lot of drugs in prisons, too. Yeah, that's what they say. Yeah, Rat yeah Dick, There Rat should Dick be, like, different kinds of prisons for different things. You don't necessarily... I mean, a lot of the times you go to prison and you come out worse because you're around a lot worse criminals. Sober? <laughs> sober? Dude, like, like, literally, like, an insane asylum is what it... You, I feel like back in the day, if you were talking to yourself in the street in the 60s, like Don Draper days, mm -hmm. two guys would come and put you in a straitjacket. 100%. Yeah, that's, and that's it. Yeah, that's what would happen. What? Right. Uh, Thanks, Ronald Reagan. And Bill Burr just had a joke about that. That's it, what he was saying. Yeah. That matter would have been where I got it from. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Bill Burr, just his new special was great. I, I, I got, I, I smoked and then watched it. It was so good. Dude. Yeah. Bill, <laughs> Bill Burr had yeah. a bit about homelessness. He had out. a bit about the WNBA, too. Wasn't yep. he at the yeah. hall oh, nice. yesterday? He was, dude. We could honestly, I could give you like front row tickets to Bill Burr almost any time he shows up to the hot. That'd be sick. Yeah, we, we should go. I'd love to go see Bill Burr. Um, yeah, we'll it, meet him. It, after. It's totally true, though. In in Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas, there's a bunch of stories about that. How, I mean, it used to be the the police department really used to be what the liberals now accuse it of being, just like a bunch of racist guys with flat tops. That's how it used to be. But even if you were just like a white guy whose hair looked unshampooed. They would throw you in the fucking van and take you downtown. Yeah. Just anybody who wasn't wearing a suit and a watch was going downtown for questioning. Oh, Buendo. Those are better times. Huh? Go over to Danny's. Hey, come here, baby. Oh. Hey, Buendo. Well, he fucking likes you more than me. Hey, what dude. do you mean? He's been approaching you all the whole day. Yeah. He's well, approached I mean, everyone You're today. playing hard to get, King. Dude, honestly, hey, you each, have you each noticed that he approached you at one point? He approached Dino. Dino didn't give him any love because he's a piece of shit. <laughs> Fuck you, uh, then we, he approached you. He sniffed your arm I on the couch. I tried to give him some love. He just ran away. Climbed dude. on Dandy's lap, and he, he got up on Austin's chair. So he said, what's up to everybody? His yeah, he's personable. 
I'll yes. give you that, Leo. He's, he's a very sweet cat. His, he's a legend. His stunt was the most impressive thing up there. That was, that was badass. I mean, crazy. I wish we could have a replay of that live right now. I'd love I to know. see that back. Dude, in slow-mo. We have it. Oh. I think Dino did. The only thing he did today was film that. Oh, boy. Good job. You know what, Dino? No, Dino, the mic's oh. too far away from him. You know what, King Croc, you know what we're going to do right now? Yeah. You and I are going to play around a Thunderdome. Oh! I don't know what this is. What remember, is this? Uh, remember Thunderdome? Yeah, it's a good, good warm-up. It's yeah. a good it's a good mind game. I, I I have my money on you, King Croc. Well, we're going to do two rounds. Danny's good, though. Croc. Danny's good. Okay. We're going to do... Uh, Explain what it is we're first. Gonna, uh, so what happens is you and I... I played this game against Airsoft Fatty famously, and he beat me. The category was uh, sitcoms or television shows. We're going to choose a category. I already know what the categories are going to be. But what's going to happen is you and I name items in this category back and forth until one of us can't think of one in about two to three seconds. Okay. That's the eh, Thunderdome. And it can't be the mm. same thing. He if, he if he said something, you can no longer say it. So if it was fruit, I would go oranges. <clears throat> Apples. Watermelon. Bananas. Plums. Mangoes. Like that. Totally. Okay, okay, I get it. I get Our it. categories that we're going to do is rock bands and hip-hop artists. Damn, oh, so right. is it one because Danny's got it? Well, I don't know. I don't know if he has an advantage in the rock band thing because you, you tend to like some of that white boy music. He definitely does. He puts dude. it on his story all I know. the time. He likes uh, Avenged Sevenfold and John Frusciante. Yeah, and shit. Oh, I love that guy. <laughs> all right, so uh, you know, but what? But obviously, you're going to have the advantage in the hip hop realm. I've got like five rappers. Yeah, exactly. I've got like five. Um, so who's going to start? And who? What's the first category? Let's do hip hop first. Go ahead and start it off, King Croc. I, I feel like White should move first right, because I ahead. don't know anything about hip hop. <laughs> it's right. like chess, right? Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Tupac. Uh, Drake. Biggie Smalls. Uh, Juicy J. Jedi Mind Tricks. The fuck is that? <laughs> is uh, that a person? I'm pretty sure. Going, yeah, keep going. Keep going. All right. Uh, fucking Mike Stud. Mm. Eminem. Nas. 50 Cent. Biggie Smalls. I already said it. Oh, you said that? Yeah, oh, Thunderdome. Oh, no. Thunderdome. Oh, and I beat it. I forgot you said that. I All know right. more about hip hop than kids. No, he doesn't. No, he doesn't. I, can I get another chance? No, we're now we're doing rock band. Oh. Doing rock band. You can start. You, you can start, start rock band. band. All right. Um. Then sevenfold, I guess. The Beatles. Wow. It's 21 over. pilots. <laughs> all right, all right. Barely. <laughs> Bob Dylan. Justin Bieber. No. Uh, yeah, maybe Bob not. Dylan was a solo artist, too, so I'll give it to him. Led right. Zeppelin. The White Keys. No, it's the Black Keys. Oh, the Black Keys. <laughs> yeah. The, the black. White Keys could be like a little you band should have known somewhere. that, Grok. <laughs> yeah. Yo, it's just not fair, bro. You <laughs> caught me off guard. Uh, dude, bro. I kind of want to see Dino and Austin go at it, dude. Hey, uh, it, Dino, come over here and, and right, get on my Hey, Republican lost. politician. Yeah. Dino versus Austin. Oh, Dino geez. sucks at it. Dino's not really a, a, like into politics. Are you, I, I can see Dino just turning it on. Uh, is there a microphone? Yeah, yeah get, get that one. It might be off, though. No, use, 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 use King Crocs. Use here. King Crocs. It's just sitting on the ground back there, dude. Yeah. I can pick it up. This one? Okay. Does it work? Okay, I'll use that one. What's up, Brando man? Will Brandy. Dude, I'm I'm gonna get roasted for that, Danny. All right. get Thankfully so it's the Patreon pod. <laughs> yeah, gonna... thank God. Dude, I just I beat him in rappers and fucking oh rock bands. Oh, Danny something. back in the day one time at the beginning of the pod like uh, beginning uh, I don't know, fifty pods, Danny made me do like a fucking who's a who's gonna be a millionaire or whatever that game show. Who who wants to be a millionaire type? Yeah. Like questions for like Van Gogh because I said I kind of knew a little bit of Van Van Gogh. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That was fucking. But he actually gnarly. crushed it. He actually <laughs> okay. crushed it. Yeah. Well, he I'm a little drunk it. right now, so it's oh, not fair. Oh, you bastard! I thought you were just drinking Danny, sparkling no, water, dude. Danny, no, I'm this drinking every vodka. time. Oh. Motherfucker's been drinking a lot. See, look, now King. If I was sober, I would have smoked you, King. Danny. If we're gonna turn you me, into a machine, you got to stop drinking. Drinking is 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 honestly a lot of a black man's downfall. Honestly, the thing is. I love you so much, Danny. Oh, no homo. I love you, King. That I want to provide good content. I, you you would totally camera. sober, dude. You would totally dude, sober. K King Krog, you're literally, we can't tell when the difference between when you're sober and drunk. Like if, if you were like like shy and you would and, and quiet, and then all of a sudden you drank and you're fucking feisty and awesome, 
we and maybe I'd be like, all right, keep drinking. But really, you're you're completely yeah, I can't the same guy. Tell. I can't even. I can never tell. No when one you're can drunk. tell, bro. So you're just all you're doing is just damaging your body and mm -hmm. making yourself fat. And dude, it turns into <laughs> sugar. It turns into sugar in, in the in the bloodstream, man. Alcohol. It's it can. It's part of why uh, there's a lot of diabetes with alcoholics, dude. Later on. Yeah, you're right, man. Go ahead, Dino. What were you gonna say? Ah, <laughs> uh, that's it. I was just gonna say alcohol makes you fat. Yeah, that, it does. That was the extent. We're of doing the point. thunderfold or whatever. Thunder right? Thunderfold, bro. So, <laughs> Dino, because we associate Dino less often with politics, Dino is gonna start it off. Your first Republican politician, go. Donald J. Trump. Mm. Dan Crenshaw. Ugh, gross. Uh, DeSantis. Mm -hmm. Ted Cruz. McCarthy. Um, Full names, people. Oh, okay. Ronald John McCarthy? Reagan. Do they have to be current politicians? No, they can be past. Oh, okay. Wait. He already said Ronald Reagan. Yeah, he said right. Ronald Reagan. Yeah. Fucking Abraham Lincoln. Oh shit, that's who I was gonna use. <laughs> um. <laughs> uh, Marco Rubio. I don't know why I can't remember his name. Your guys are getting thunderdomed right now. That's no, a man. Dome. That's a Is that a thunderdome? Yeah. yeah. It's like yeah. if it's anything more than two beats or so, it's yeah, a thunderdome. Thunder oh. You kind of oh. get like one. Arnold, like, oh, Arnold fuck, oh, fuck. Yeah. yeah, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Dwight D. Eisenhower. McDonald's. Gerald Ford. He was a Republican, right? George Bush. Yeah. George W. Bush. There we go. Nice, Leo. Fucking Rhino. Fuck those guys. Fucking Herbert Hoover. They're Rhinos, like fake <laughs> Republicans. You look at yeah, Grant. Oh, Calvin yeah. Coolidge. How, why do you know all these fucking random ass presidents? Man? They're, they're George 30s. Washington, dude. He was Robert I was about to say that one too. The first Republican was Abraham Lincoln. Yes, he was. <laughs> yes. Theodore Roosevelt. <laughs> Wait, he might have been a, a Democrat, Theodore. Andrew yeah, Republican didn't exist back then. He had the big yes, stick, did. didn't he? That was kind of I mean, Democrat like George shit. Washington? No, I said Theodore Roosevelt. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Theodore. You guys wait. Os Dino, do you think Donald's the best president in the history of the United States? Absolutely. Yeah, probably. Look at these guys. I thought you didn't like Donald that much. I don't think he's perfect. I don't really like many politicians at all, honestly. Dude, but... Abraham Lincoln's the fucking best Republican president. I didn't he's know him president. personally. Uh, he's probably pretty good, though. I mean, Abraham dude, Lincoln's I probably his, the best president of all time. Dude, yeah. the crisis <laughs> he dealt with, dude, fucking slavery. Yeah. It was a pretty crazy crisis. Dude, and they insane. hated him, dude. Yeah. Obviously, he got assassinated. Poor he guy. He did get smoked. Yeah, dude. Donald smoked. Donald Trump, he had just like an... I mean, he made the economy good, but it was already fucking great. He just needs just, another term, and then, like, he doesn't need to worry about re-election. He can just, like, dude, I, I think destroy we need, everyone. We need DeSantis, he dude. I don't think I... Thank you. I don't think you. Oh, Thank you. Yeah. I, I think I would take anybody else. Besides I don't trust Trump. him. I don't, I, I, really? don't, I'm, I don't want the crazy shit anymore, man. Yeah. Come on. And we we're we're crazy funny shit. enough. The only reason you're saying it's crazy is because of the establishment. Because you've been cut. And That's true. Their, their perspective, like that they've pushed on the rest of society. Think so? But here's the thing, Danny. Yeah. DeSantis has the rest of his life. Yeah. Trump think, only has four more years. Yeah, he has like nothing to lose. Why can't we do just, Trump and DeSantis? I, I think Trump could have done a couple things a little differently. Oh, Come he on. definitely fucked up for sure. He was like, he was he was like was George perfect. Burns in The Simpsons. Like, hey, hey, he liked watching everything burn. Here, here's my problem with Trump. Yeah, but Trump, he's not dude. connected to the establishment. Dude, Trump's sort of a fucking... I mean, I like that he'll like fucking make China straighten up. He's right. not afraid. He'll fucking tell North Korea, hey... Come shake my hand or I'll fucking blow you up, you pieces of shit. <laughs> mm. I like that. But, dude, like, I, when I listened to him on the Nelk podcast, that's when I was like, oh, this guy doesn't know anything. That's when I first realized that. He's just such a bullshit artist. He's the king of it. He's literally the guy that, like, he's like me and Danny walking, like, yes. uh, talking ourselves into, like, a club. Yes. That's what he, he does. That's what he is. did it's all awesome, the way bro. to the top. <laughs> Shut hilarious. up, Pocahontas. And she, you know, like, it's when he called that woman Pocahontas, dude. That's what we that need, awesome. though, man. Because yeah, I'm dude. telling you, this is exactly what will happen if DeSantis becomes president. Nothing. He will take his hands. And he will put them under his ass and sit on them and do literally nothing like every other Republican candidate. And then four years later, a Democrat's going to get elected and move us more to the left. Yep. And then a Republican's going to sit on their hands and do nothing. Mm -hmm. And then four years later, we're going to move more to the left. The Republicans, they, they're all bullshit artists, too, but not in the same way Trump is like. 
Trump's at least they, they're all just trying to make money. They they do stock trades and deals like this. Like there's not a single Republican that's not a piece of shit. I don't trust DeSantis. I don't think he's any different. DeSantis is ballsy though. I mean, DeSantis called Disney a woke corporation. Like, yeah, but that's easy. He's just playing yeah. into his base. Like it's not every ballsy, Republican, but that's, isn't it? But that's he just alienating. says exactly what's going to get people to be like. But people hate him though. Like I mean, he's taking heat, and he hasn't folded under any of the heat from the left yet. Oh, I mean, I he's like that. he's sort the of. left's like second least favorite politician. I mean, Gavin Newsom, that was like basically a DeSantis attack ad that we just saw from Gavin Newsom. Mm -hmm. So he's already withstanding some pressure, which is a good sign. He's not Mitt Romney, who's like announcing pronouns and shit or whatever. Well, true, Mitt Romney's real bad, but it's like the Democrats, they're going to hate you anyways. Yeah, it's you know they're not gonna like you anyways. Yeah, yeah, it's true. If you're so, he's just power. doing the Trump thing. He's he's basically just trying to be like, like beta Trump. Beta Trump, dude. That sounds like another supplement you should market, dude. I wouldn't Beta mind Trump. having him the next year, <laughs> but I, I feel like he is just going to... Like, I got screwed by Dan Crenshaw. Yeah, dude. Dan Fuck Crenshaw was from my... Like, where I lived in Texas. I fucking voted for him. I thought he was going to be epic. And then he gets into Congress, and he's just smooching and groove, doing all these, like weird political parties and shit totally became part of the establishment like pushed for red flag, flag laws, and, laws and like yeah. a whole bunch of stuff that nobody that voted for him even supports and it's because he just cares about like how the other people in washington think how the fbi like i don't want to do this because it might look bad da, da, da. trump doesn't give a fuck how anything looks yeah that's the best thing it's like he doesn't care about all these other people's like bullshit opinions he cares about the general population's opinion, because he's kind of an ego egotist, and he likes people to like but, him. But let me put it like this, and I don't pretend to, I didn't get into politics until like a year or two ago, so I don't know a lot about Trump's actual presidency, but Abraham Lincoln, for instance, a lot of people, let people on the left nowadays look back and think, hey, he wasn't vocal enough, he didn't do enough to emancipate the slaves. The genius of Abraham Lincoln, though, is he knew he couldn't go off spouting his true intentions. Truth is, he was an abolitionist from a very young age, and he hated racism. But if he announced that, he would have been so unpopular politically that he never would have gotten into a position where he could have done anything about slavery. Maybe Dan Crenshaw knows that if he just talks a bunch of shit on Twitter, he's never going to get elected and get any of his conservative things done. So he knows he has to play a little bit nice. Is there anything to that? All Crenshaw does is talk mm. shit on Twitter, bro. It's an off. It's like he just fucking cucks to the left and shit. I mean, he's I like a big Crenshaw. sort of FBI, CIA, military, deep state. He he likes that crowd. Those are the people that he fucks with, mm. the dudes yeah. in the suits. And he'll just like honestly like uh, like fucking George Bush the first one was the same way. He was literally the guy in Dallas in charge of making sure that JFK didn't get assassinated that day mm. because he's like head of the CIA. Rude. JFK literally dies, and then like two months later, they give George Bush a promotion to head of the CIA, and then magically he becomes president later after literally failing at the only thing he was responsible yeah. for, which was keep the president safe. It's like, I, I don't... It's sus. Yeah, he's mad yeah. sus. My De thing is, like, DeSantis is definitely the best out of all of them. DeSantis and Ted Cruz are the Before two we leave the subject, I'm going to let you speak, King Croc. I just want to say before we get into that subject, if if Dan Crenshaw gets out of line, we'll yank that eye patch off and fuck his empty eye socket. <laughs> How about that, boys? We can yeah, remove his other seal eye. My and then what is he going to do? He can't see. <laughs> what were you saying, Kingy? No, I was just saying, I think the guy wants to be cool. Crenshaw? Crenshaw. He wants yeah. to be in. He wants to appear on SNL and have celebrities yeah. fucking follow him on Instagram and Twitter. Like, that's the kind of guy he is. I want to see his last couple of tweets. You know, so that's the difference between him and a guy like Trump who's okay with being the heel. You ever watch wrestling, WWE? Yeah. There's this concept of the heel yeah. who is the, the villain. Trump's okay with being the villain, right? And we need more guys that are okay with being yeah. unliked by yeah. the mainstream. That's really what it is. Unwashed masses. Leo, I need you to understand this. I get it. Listen, I know you're this you're a similar type of guy. You like to be liked. Mm -hmm. You want people to love you. You like to be worshipped. Uh, but I've here's the thing, used to Leo. Being hated now. Tatavio, you're based. 
deep down. You're made of a Obviously, I'm a Latino breed. machismo. Hey, guys, I, I just, you're woke. I just want to say we're going to talk about I'm Leo's. Woke, we're going to talk. Yeah, that's confusing. in a good way. We're just Dan Crenshaw for your guys' information. His last couple tweets are all anti illegal immigration. They're all drawing attention to the border. Uh. And then it's all yeah, anti it's all anti the mandatory vaccination in the military that's killing recruitment. Mm -hmm. Like he's Let not me some, see some anti abortion and then I'll take him seriously. That's some hot topic shit. He's never gonna talk it's about It's really that. his red flag law shit. He's and, like and Danny, he's like Danny, yeah, really Danny, anti second yeah, yeah. amendment. You're an like American software. citizen. I am. Actually I'm not anymore. Do you love this country? Failure like to pay taxes, yes. Would you support red flaw red red flag laws that would take away the Second Amendment from your fellow citizens? Explain to me what triggers a red flag seizure. Hello, my name is Karen Johnson. <laughs> I'm white and retarded, and <laughs> my neighbor is voting for Trump, and he's a little scary. I don't know if he's. I think he has guns in his house, and I think he's emotionally unstable. Uh -huh. Um, here's his address. Uh -huh. Boop, boop, beep, beep, yep. beep, beep, beep. Uh huh. And then a SWAT truck shows up. Burn, no knock warrant. Kicks door down. Kick Give me all your guns. See, are you guys exaggerating? Are you guys taking the extreme fear of what a red flag law might turn into, or is that actually how it works? In no, most I cases? mean that's the like. It this one guy, the shit. police just showed up unannounced and said, "We're taking all your guns or yeah. way or whatever," and then he fucking fought the cops. Because he was like, physically? No, like with his guns. He was like, you're not taking my guns away. Wait, was blah, that blah, the blah. case where he died? Is yeah, he died. Yeah. <laughs> Damn. And I think one of them, he took an officer with him. He killed one officer and then died okay. when they were trying to enforce these red flag laws. To be fair, I'm uneducated on this. Uh, to me, when I heard about red flag laws, I assumed that meant that people like the Uvalde shooter, who there is evidence to suggest he was drowning kittens in pillowcases, throwing them over the sides of bridges, that should trigger a red flag weapon seizure. Things like that I'm okay with. I didn't know it was as simple as, hey, the guy's got an NRA sticker on the back of his pickup. Well, it, well it's, also it's not really that. It's the whole concept of innocent until proven guilty. That's sort of what our entire, like, framework revolves around mm. and yeah. red flag laws there's no court date or anything like that it's just like a a bureaucrat or whatever decides that yeah. oh you i'm just gonna take your gun away and you're not even gonna fucking know yeah it's kind of like the no fly list like nick fuentes he's just kind of like f uh far right sort of political commentary dude he does kind of like edgy shit like what we do like podcasts and stuff on the internet the fbi and shit just put him on a no fly list and they don't tell you no due process they, they, they can't even tell you at the airport they're like oh sorry your ticket just won't go through and then he's like what does that mean and then eventually they were like yeah basically you're on a government no fly list but it won't tell us why or wow, wow. how and now he just can't fly on airplanes anymore in america well, he's gotta and, get ready enough to get a jet <laughs> this Private whole jet. thing is similar to um the patriot act mm -hmm. and all these other um, abuses of the Constitution where they completely abuse your constitutional rights, mm -hmm. right? And so supporting flag laws is basically saying, fuck due process. Mm -hmm. We don't care if you have to be proven mm -hmm. uh, a wrong in a court of law. No, we just have this. Look, look at FISA courts. What do they do? They have a secret court where there's no audience, there's no constitutional rights. They stamp that shit, and bam, they can just abuse your constitutional rights. Mm -hmm. So this is another step in that direction, and that's why we, me, Austin, and Dino are so opposed to red flag laws yeah. and people who support them like Dan Crenshaw. Yeah, no, I back it. Like, I mean, dude, if you took my fucking gun away in Los Angeles, I would feel so unsafe. Like, that's the one. Yeah. In my neighborhood, dude, I'm so happy I got my six-shooter next to my bed at night. Mm. Yeah, yeah, that's fucked up. I'm with you guys. Yeah, I'm with you guys. Yeah, if, uh, and then what they also do is, like, this happened to me one time. The cops will show up to your house for something that was a false alarm. Uh, like, nothing even happened. child gay porn. And they'll just, <laughs> well, we, like, you'll have these guns handed down from grandparents and stuff that are completely off the books, legal, but, like, they're not in sort of some sort of government registry yeah. or whatever. But if you have any kind of minor thing happen at your house that, you know, hasn't been proven a crime or not or whatever... And even often, uh, the cops get there and they obviously know nothing actually happened. Like, you just got swatted. They will take all of your guns and you will not get them back for like six months. And they are going to register all of them. And then eventually, 
whenever they say like we're gonna start taking people's guns they're gonna show up and oh we have a convenient list uh there's this hunting rifle mm -hmm. da, 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 registered under your name yep. that we seized from your house that one day and it's like it's a bunch of small stuff like that mm. where like the government shouldn't be able to know whether or I not mean, to I be honest, I mean, they might have thought that Dino was a school shooter. And honestly, I have no reason to believe that he doesn't. Innocent until proven guilty. Let me at least 